This is the future era of steampunk. There are attraction cities built on top of giant ships in western countries, mysterious and powerful eastern mountain states by the mountains, as well as sky cities occupied by anti-traction alliances dependent on mountain states, and monstrous products left over from the war, as well as mechanical zombies made using living people. And all this evolution comes from the end of the 21st century. Humanity broke out a quantum weapon war, and in just 60 minutes, the modern civilization inherited for thousands of years was beaten to the brink of extinction, surviving human beings after countless years of recovery. The tragedy of the late 21st century has been gradually forgotten. Only the City of London museums remain most of the ancient artifacts. For example, this is a treasure they regard as the American deity from the old generation minions. The City of London is also the largest traction city in the world today, and its hunting target today is these market towns. The town's radio went off at the right time, and they, too, they also spotted the giant city coming from afar. The inhabitants scattered and fled. Small towns shrink nimbly and flee individually. Only the poor mining town's engine failed. London City continued to approach and it had to empty all its reserves of resources. The inhabitants of London City cheered as they looked at the energy and enslaved people they were about to receive. The commander of London City estimates the distance and decisively orders the anchor hook to be shot, taking control of the town with precision, with a command from the mayor. Prepare to ingest. The city opened its huge mouth. The mining town could not escape the fate of being swallowed. What awaits it is to be mercilessly crushed into pieces and used as fuel to fuel the engine that controls the city. Tom who is again late for work, is a special kind of person in London, he hates war, and he hates invasion, working in the museum, he loves to collect and study all kinds of technological objects from the old days, after deducting his performance bonus for the month, the curator assigned him the task of entertaining the distinguished Catherine, Catherine was researching the history of the 60 minutes war in the olden days, Tom enthusiastically shows Catherine around his studio, Knowing that Catherine also deplores war, Tom shows Catherine his secret stash of old-time weapons and energy. He told Catherine that when the city of London passed through the swamp, he would secretly destroy all these technologies. Then Tom took Catherine to his work site. Here he also saw the commander of London City. Tom then learns that Catherine is the commander's daughter. While the commander was giving an impassioned speech to brainwash the newly accepted enslaved people, a masked girl approached him with a sharp knife. She stabbed the commander directly in the abdomen. As she prepared to continue the stabbing, Tom swooped in from the crowd and unloaded the girl's weapon. The failed stabbing girl had to turn and run as the soldiers came. Tom chased after her as she called for help. They ran into the town that was being crushed to pieces. The girl nimbly dodged the gears, and Tom was in hot pursuit. But when the girl saw the commander in the elevator, she panicked and ran into a dead end, and without hesitation, she was ready to jump straight down. Tom arrived in time, a hand to pull the girl, but the girl told Tom. After saying that, Hester broke away from Tom's hand and fell down. When the commander arrived, from the mouth of Tom learned of their conversation, he kicked the railing and pushed Tom down as well. When his daughter arrived with soldiers, the commander sent his daughter away with excuses. That's when Catherine noticed Tom's best friend across the platform. He seemed to have seen everything that passed and fled in a panic. Catherine then took her father home to treat his injuries and found Tom's best friend, Bevis. Bevis told her the truth. Catherine couldn't believe it. Bevis went on to tell Catherine that her commanding father had been covering up something. He's been secretly building something he can't tell anyone about in the church. Bevis tries to get inside several times but it's heavily guarded. That's when Catherine tells Bevis she can find a way to get in. The scene shifts. And luckily Tom and Hester are not dead. Hester took Tom's money and dagger while he was unconscious. When Tom wakes up, he looks at the strange surroundings and is at a loss. He had never been outside the city before. So he followed Hester. Hester didn't want to care, but he couldn't stand Tom's mouth. So he had to let him follow him. The sad thing is that Tom, who has zero survival skills, naively summoned a distant wandering confederate army at night. These are scavengers who specialize in hunting at night. Fortunately, they fell into a pothole at a critical moment and were rescued by a scavenging couple. The couple treated them with extra hospitality, promised to send Tom to the nearest trading city, and kindly arranged a room for them. In addition to the fact that the room looked like a jail cell, Tom, who could finally sit down and rest, also apologized to Hester for his recklessness. Hester also finally told Tom her story. Her mother was an archaeologist who died when she was eight years old. The commander at the time seemed to be her mother's lover and would visit them occasionally. Life was always good, until one day, her mother unearthed a mysterious chest that the commander had been looking for. To get this chest, 
The commander brutally killed her mother directly. The commander also wounded Hester's face at that time. Fortunately, at the last moment, her mother used her final strength to protect her, so she finally escaped. Hester, who was only eight years old at the time, collapsed in the swamp and was adopted by this mechanical zombie called Shrike. Shrike is special, as a zombie, he has no heart but a kind soul. After all, Shrike was once a father as a human, he gradually raised Hester with the loss of his unique tenderness, but Hester has been caught in the pain of his mother's murder and cannot extricate himself. Shrike always wanted to break Hester free in his way, so he was ready to transform Hester into a being like him. She agreed. Until six months ago, when she learned of the impending arrival of the city of London, unable to control her vengeful heart, she reneged on her promise to Shrike and ran away. She set out on her path of revenge, but at this point, she didn't know that Shrike was completely out of control because of her betrayal. Shrike was finally caught by the soldiers of the city of London and imprisoned in this prison of death. And this news was learned by the commander, who knew that Shrike had been hunting Hester directly after the explosion of the death prison. So the out-of-control Shrike once again embarked on his hunting road. After a night's rest, they wake up and notice that the car is going off course. Realizing that something was wrong, they found the door locked. And only after being escorted out by the scavenging couple did they discover that they had been sold to a slave market. Hester was about to be bought by the owner in front of him. A woman in red wearing sunglasses appears just in time. Her name is Fong, the boss of the Anti-Traction Alliance and the most wanted man in London. The leader of the traffickers also seems to recognize Fong and is tempted to capture her in exchange for ransom, but the next moment, he angered Fong, worthy of her domineering name, and took out all the traffickers' men by himself. Tom took the opportunity to escape but Shrike caught them up. Fine appeared in time and drove the blimp to repel Shrike with one shot. Hester also took the opportunity to climb into the blimp with the help of Tom, who had just caught the rope and was ready to rise when Shrike grabbed the bottom of the string. The airship is about to lose control under Shrike's powerful pull. Fine throws a knife at Hester and tells her to give up on Tom and cut the rope, but Hester threw the knife directly at Tom. At the last moment, Tom cut the rope, and they managed to escape. On the airship, after Fine treated Hester's leg injury, Hester learned from her that Fine was his mother's friend, and has been looking for her for years. On the other hand, the commander's daughter and Bevis also came to the museum, ready to secretly infiltrate the church to find out the truth. They also learned from the owner that the guards forcibly took away Tom's hidden weapons. The curator also realizes that the commander seems to have a secret. With his guidance, the two of them managed to get through the museum's secret passages to the church. They saw that the commander had been secretly building a quantum weapon, Medusa. To destroy the world and saw the commander's exposed ambition, he has long bribed all the soldiers and officials and directly shot the mayor, the commander's daughter, who could not believe all this and also wanted to question her father, but fortunately, in time, was pulled away by Bevis. Fine took Tom back to the Anti-Traction Alliance, the legendary Sky City Airport. Here Fine told Hester that her mother died before the archaeological excavation of a dangerous thing. Through Fine's description, combined with the recent anomalies in the city of London, Tom finally learned that the original commander grabbed from her mother was the core mainframe of the quantum weapon Medusa. His ambition was to restart the quantum weapon to break through the unbroken defense wall of the Eastern Mountain Kingdom. Just as they were about to inform the governor of the mountain country. A sudden riot broke out in the airport, and Shrike came to break the door. Human weapons are ineffective against powerful mechanical zombies. Under cover of the others, Tom takes Hester and prepares to go to the airship, but the Shrike who came after him took control of Tom. Looking at Tom in danger, Hester cried and begged Shrike to let him go. For Tom's sake, Hester is willing to follow him back to fulfill his promise, but what she didn't understand was that Shrike was doing everything for the sake of his daughter to be free from sorrow and pain, watching her daughter give up her life to protect a man. Shrike knew that Hester finally had something to fall back on, so the light in his eyes disappeared. Shrike finally released his inner obsession, and his body couldn't hold on. At the end of his life, he gave her back the necklace her mother had left behind, and told she, then the huge sky city died with Shrike, and the surviving alliance members took Tom and Hester to the Mountain Kingdom quickly. Tom also finally saw the legendary impregnable walls of the Mountain Kingdom, which had been buried with countless tractor predator cities. The commander of the city of London is also carrying out the final mobilization work. A new war of extinction was about to begin. Tom has made it to the interior of the mountain country. Fong found the governor of the mountain country and reported the situation for the sake of the peace of the mountain country. He had to order the alliance fleet to make a preemptive strike. The red alert was sounded, and all the airships went out. London City's quantum weapons also entered the final charging stage, with a command from the commander.
All fleets and walls were destroyed in the blink of an eye. The city was in chaos. But at the last moment, Hester finally came to her senses. She found the key to unlock Medusa's program from the necklace her mother had left her. Fine also saw her only hope. She prepares to organize the remaining airships to take Tom and Heston to London. Soon, the second wave of Medusa's attack arrives, and their blimp is shattered by the powerful shockwave that destroys the glass. With life to death, under the suicidal cover of the crew, Fine led them to infiltrate successfully. She calmly commanded Hess to wait for the signal arrangement at the front door. Tom piloted the blimp overhead to cover, while she, arriving above the church, Fuang aimed at the commander. Unfortunately, the guards found her and blocked the bullets with their lives. The bullets were fired, and Fang was unfortunately shot. The commander arranged the last attack and came to the top of the building to start a physical battle with Fuang. Hest also took the opportunity to infiltrate the church to help Hest by time. Fang chose to use her life to hold back the commander. At the last moment, the quantum weapon was successfully shut down. However, the commander, overwhelmed by his desire, was still determined to use the entire city of London as a weapon, despite his daughter's advice, and smashed the walls of the mountain country. Completely desperate daughter decided to stay, just as she watched all the pilots were brutally killed. When she was at a loss, Tom, who had been hovering around, contacted the cockpit. Tom commanded Hess to open the gate of the London City engine. He piloted the dirigible out in a risky dash to blow up the engine. Hest also caught up with the commander, who was preparing to leave in the airship. He was about to take a gun to the commander, but the commander told Hest that he was her birth father. The words disrupted Hest's thoughts. The commander managed to grab the gun, fortunately using the inertia of the hidden engine, was blown up and fought back. They struggled together. Finally, Tom arrived in a blimp and managed to pick up Hest. A shell directly destroyed the commander's airship. The commander did not die in the fall of the airship. Instead, the city of London dramatically crushed him to death in the last few meters. After everything is resolved, it can finally relax. At the movie's end, Commander's daughter brings the survivors to the mountain country, and the governor of the mountain country chose to accept them. The end of the war brought only destruction, 